Yeah, I'm harsh on people. Yeah, I say what when it deserves to be said, I believe at least. But I'm going to say it again when it deserves to be said good. Fury, your guys, hey, you guys, guy, he's a genius. I say, I'm not saying he's the best fight ever because he was sloppy in a lot of spots, and uh, but he's probably the best technical heavyweight we have right now at that level, up at the top, uh, probably, uh, right now, probably, that he can do more things than most guys. Like Joshua improved to an extent where you got to give him credit, where he reinvented himself to beat Ruiz the second time by boxing. But this is a guy who could show you he could box and he could go get you. You know what I mean? He could he could transform both. He could go how, both ways. How he, surprised were you by how well Fury was able to adjust and almost change his whole his well, that's whole like style? I, see, that's what I why I'm saying he's a genius. Because I found because, it shocking. Well, I, no one expected him to come out and beat him up like here's that. Here's the key to me on that point, and I started it earlier. He fought the first fight the way that you're supposed to with his skills and his agility and his mobility. And he got a draw, but he still almost got knocked out. Yep. And he goes and makes a complete transition. He's a genius. Uh, I'll say it again. He goes and make, and says, because there's two ways to fight a puncher. One is the way he did the first time, to give angles, not to stand in front of the guy because the puncher needs to be set to punch. Okay, that's, start with that. Get that. Let's start with that. Write that down. See, that's where we start. Puncher must be set to punch. Okay, so you start with that premise, with that idea. The first time he handled the way that we usually see it handled, kept him off balance, gave angles, didn't stand in front too long until he got caught to a couple of times, and, and he still almost lost, but he did good too. It's a genius. He turns around and completely in control of his emotions this way, even though he's a maniac. <laughs> I give him credit again. <laughs> and he goes, and what does he do? He says, oh, there's a second way there is to deal with a puncher. The second way is also to keep him from being set to punch, keep him off balance, by pushing him backwards on his back foot, by pushing him back. And the, But the key is don't get caught on the way in. Mm -hmm. So he was aggressive, but scientifically smart behind the jab. And he out jabbed the crap out of him. And that was the key. That's one of the we, things you pointed out in the fight plan is that every time Wilder would try to start setting up, Fury would pop him with the jab and come forward. Yeah. And, and kept him off balance. He he came in, he was aggressive, but he was kind of like, well, you don't know about this, Ken, because you live in sunny California. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're not here with us. New York is here in the winters. But it's kind of like a snow plow. When the snow, you've probably never seen one, but when the snow, <laughs> when the snow, and I know no you're from New England, I guess, I, 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 LA so, but, but you forgot about them because you've been away. You've been in the sunshine a long time, a long time. But it's like a snow plow. The plow clears everything so the truck can come. The jab clears everything so the truck can come. And he came in, the scientific part, the small part was he being Fury, came in behind the jab, cleared the wake, kept the right hand from being getting off, kept kept the the cleared the path so he could get in clean. And the reason I give him say so he knew. So Fury understood, okay, the second way that I could deal with a puncher to keep him set from being punched, because that's that's the goal. Keep him set from being punched. Do I do it by moving? Or I could do it by backing him up, keeping him on his back foot. He did it by backing him up. Here's the difference. Not only did he get to the physical place and break him down physically, by doing that, he broke him down mentally. By doing that, he took away the most important thing that a puncher has, his confidence. Oh, he definitely his, took his, his confidence. Be, his belief, his belief that I'm the boss, that you're afraid of me. Uh, yeah. And that's another thing. I always thought that the greatest weakness about Tyson, I think Wilder has a little bit of this. I always thought that the greatest detriment, weakness to Tyson was that 
He depended on you to be weak for him to be strong. Digest that. He he depended for the guy to be scared, for the guy to be hurt. Instead of just being strong for the sake of being strong, no matter what happens. That's a real pro. Just to be strong. And when you don't have a power can be a curse. Yeah, it's a great asset. It's a it's a great gift, but it can be a curse because you don't develop the other abilities. You don't develop the other qualities to to be able to depend on yourself, not just on your power. And Tyson used to depend on other guys to be weak for him to be strong. <clears throat> and I think to a certain extent, that's what bullies depend on and what punches depend on in general. And I think Wilder, he depended on you being afraid of the right hand or being hurt by the right hand for him to feel strong. That was taken away. That that was taken away because you you had the image. Just think of him. The image of a guy just walking through him. The image of, you know, kind of like those, you know, kind of like that movie where you see those commercials, you see those movies where everything blows up. You know, maybe it's a Clint Eastwood movie. I don't know. Where the guy, where the guy is walking down, you know, for the shootout. And you see all the dust and all the dirt and the bombs blow. And then he's, who comes walking through it? Clint Eastwood. With, with his with his guns on his side, right? Yeah. And and he comes walking right through it. You know, and you say, Oh my god, you just saw everything blowing up. You saw all this <laughs> dust, you saw all this dirt, all this destruction. And the guy, holy Christ, he's not human. He he there he is, he's still there. And it was almost like that. Like he gave that imagery of the unstoppable force, of mm-hmm. the of the, you know, superhero the guy no matter what he's, he keeps going he put that into his head because he depended on the right hand scaring him or hurting him or slowing him down or you know giving him that edge and he you know keeping him from that way of thinking mm-hmm. saving him from that place so <clears throat> He went and chose the, I mean, this guy, what a genius. He chose the latter way of dealing with the puncher. And he was right. And I think there was, why I say he's a genius, I think his instincts are great. I mean, this guy survived death. Suicidal he survived thoughts. suicidal thoughts. You know, he, he beat the demons in drug addiction and alcohol. I mean, he, he fought the fight. The toughest fight you could fight. And and he won it. And this, I mean, this guy, he his instincts were right. He understood on some level, Ken, where if I can remove this, if I could detach this guy, you know, I want to keep his right hand out of commission, back him up. Okay, I get that. But if I could make this guy feel human, if I could make this guy have to deal with just what he, what I have to deal with, just normal qualities, you know, and take away this superpower. If I could take his superpower away. Remember Superman when he went into that chamber? Mm-hmm. Poor guy. I felt sorry for him. Remember they put him in that chamber and he got drained mm-hmm. of all his superpowers? And now he went to fight a guy and he got the cat beat out of him. <laughs> Poor Clark. Yeah. You know, he... He instinctually understood that. I'm going to make him go into a chamber and take away his superpowers and make him mortal. And let's see how tough he is now. Let's see how strong he is now in those dimensions. Genius. Genius.